Hi everybody, today I'm sitting here with Harold Montgomery, who is the president of Midwest Global Group. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. So I think the best part, the best part to start today is with your story. So I was just saying like, I don't know a lot about how you got into your business and exactly what you do. Okay. Um, I guess I kind of stumbled upon it. Uh, I, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan and you know, as a kid, one thing I'd like to do was travel and I'd like to read a lot of travel books. I remember I read in comic books and in one particular, was a story about Marco Polo. It talked about how he went around the world mm -hmm. and trading different things. I always thought that would be kind of cool to go from country to country, just you know, visiting people, but also you know, trading different objects, what have you. Um, so, I actually went to college for engineering. Okay. Um, I was a science major, and I guess my background is unique in that a lot of during my summer times, I actually worked for a lot of big companies. I didn't work. I know a lot of friends that worked in retail, you know, mm -hmm. McDonald's, Macy's, what have you. I worked for a lot of big companies when I was in college. Doing and internships? I had internships from the time I was actually graduated from high school through the time I graduated from college. Uh, but one thing I knew after every summer, I don't want to work for a large company mm -hmm. because it's, it's restrictive. You kind of have to have take on the personality of the company right and it's not safe uh, your job isn't safe i grew up in michigan during the late 70s where i had a lot of my friends whose parents lost their jobs oh yeah and I, it's funny i had an internship working for general motors my last semester in uh, high school we got laid off before christmas really and i said uh there's no way i'm gonna do this for the rest of my life because it's just not secure which is interesting because I think a lot of people think the opposite, that working for a corporation is the secure route. They do. I mean, it's, you know, it's a nice little paycheck, you know, a nice little pension until it stops. Yeah. And by then a lot of people, they're locked in. They've either got kids in school, you've got a mortgage, you've got a car, mm -hmm. you know, what, what have you. So I don't want to be locked down and restricted by that. But like I said, I, I knew I didn't want to work for somebody. Uh, but I went to school for engineering, but in the back of my mind, I always said, find something that's safe that's going to pay for this. Mm -hmm. Find two things you want to do, but something you really love to do. My jobs in college and work, work were fine, but they were just to pay for my business. Right. Uh, when I was at engineering school, I was at Georgia Tech. I stumbled across a couple of guys that had started their own business, and they were actually importing products. And they hired me to spend my time during breaks at school going through the library. Really? Looking up stuff. So I was looking up stuff, you know, working for them, but also kind of training myself. You know, this is what I want to do. Okay, how do you start an import business? And I just kind of taught myself piece by piece by piece by piece. So what kind of stuff were you looking up in the library? Um, they were doing electronics. One guy had actually worked for an uh, electronic distributor. And they were bidding on government contracts. Back then, there were these booklets that the <laughs> Department of Commerce put out. You could just basically get on there, one ads. If you can supply this product, put in your bid, we accept the bid, boom, you just deliver it. I mean, wow. it's pretty simple, but it's hard to, you have to hire somebody to do that. Yeah. Most people don't know, because you know, the government's like this big web where mm -hmm. you don't know where it starts or ends. So I got out of uh, college and I was still working on the import thing. I wasn't quite sure what type of product I was going to do. And it was kind of weird how I really got into it was a friend of mine from undergraduate. He had actually moved to Chicago. We went to school in Georgia together. Okay. He was from West Africa. Oh. And he said, you know, I'm having a hard time paying my bills. Is there something you could think about where we could make a little bit of money? I just need to pay my rent. And he was from he's from Africa mm -hmm. uh, I showed him these scarves mm -hmm. and he said I have an uncle that owns a shop he sells these and I said okay let's let's try this let's try and sell some just to see how it works yeah if it works we can do it together if it doesn't you know no harm no foul uh, the first order we got you know paying our rent for like two months really for one school and how did you get your first order what did um, you I had a friend she worked with me she was from the University of Illinois she had just graduated. She said, oh yeah, we had these scarves at our graduation. I can put you in touch with the guy that organized the uh, Wow. Event. So I had the guys in Ghana make him a sample. 
they saw and they liked it and they decided to buy from us. That's crazy. So I told them, I said, you know, we can get one school to do this. Imagine doing all these uh, schools across the country. Um, and going back to undergrad, actually one thing I did do, um, I kind of hustled my way through undergrad. Mm -hmm. I was selling MCI subscriptions. Um, I, What's MCI? Uh, MCI is a telephone company. Back then, this was in 19, like, mid 80s. They had just broken up AT&T. Okay. Uh, because back then, they were the only phone company around. So they broke them up. They split up their long distance. So this one year, everyone had to pick what their long distance company was going to be. So I ended up going to all the schools in Atlanta. I made up these pamphlets and flyers. <laughs> And I would sign up students left and right. Really? Uh, and I was, you know, I got these residual checks. In fact, I got residual checks from that for about 20 years. What? Yeah. And um, that's when I kind of thought in the back of my mind, you know, the easiest market to sell to are college students because they turn over every year. Mm -hmm. They're always going to be there. The it's a built-in market. Colleges don't have recessions. Right. There's always going to be a college. Yeah. And that's how I kind of stumbled on this. I said, you know, we can do this to colleges and just basically set up a network where these people buy from us all the time. We're set. Wow. Um, so my friend and I, we were doing this for a couple of years. He ended up graduating and he went to Wall Street. I kept doing it, um, but I was doing it part time uh, for about, let's see, this is 94. Wow. I did it part time for about eight years. Uh, and then I you know, I was still working in corporate. I got laid off. This is in 2002, mm -hmm. Christmas of 2002. Oh man. And I said, you know, I was, oh, I was tired because I was traveling like 95% of the time. Yeah. I said, you know what, this is just the time to do it. So I started doing this full time. Um, it took me about two years to make my corporate salary. Wow. And I've been fine ever since. But still um, two years. I mean, like yeah, it's, some people it's like four years, some people it's eight years. And I've been doing this long, I've been doing this part time and I said, you know, if I can do this well part time, what is, what is it going to be like when I do a full time? Right. So did you, like when you were in college and you had started this, did you want it to evolve into your full time salary job or it's yeah. because it sounds like it was a side hustle to begin with. It was with. a side hustle to begin with, um, but I had to make a, a decision. Actually, my son was born in 2000 okay. and I actually started a corporate a consulting job with a software company mm -hmm. I was on the road 95% of the time oh wow and I I got tired of it but I also said to myself I don't want to grow up my son to grow up and I'm not here right um, he had just turned two and he was getting to the point where he noticed every Sunday he get upset because mm -hmm. he knew I was leaving mm -hmm. and then I come home Friday and it's like I don't know what's going on and my wife worked full time yeah and she had to deal with him during the week so it's starting to be a strain uh, I knew I was gonna do this full-time I just didn't know when right and finally when I lost my job I said you know what it's just time you got to take a chance if it doesn't work out fine just get another job but you wow. got to try and I mean looking back after the third year I said you know what would have happened if I had done this five years earlier I yeah exactly been bigger do you think you had opportunities to do it five years earlier and you just weren't taking them um no one reason I stayed was when he was born, I wanted to make sure everything was okay with him. Yeah. Before I left, because uh, my wife had a very difficult pregnancy. Oh, really? And his medical bills are like astronomical. In fact, it's, it was over a hundred thousand dollars. He was born premature. Oh my God. He was in the hospital for two months. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Um, so I wanted to make sure everything with him was okay, and we had just moved. Uh, we had just bought our home about six months before oh my I God. Uh, lost my job. So you lost your job, you had a new home, a baby. A two year old. Wow. But I mean, I was pretty comfortable with it. I said, well, yeah, you know, I'm making enough where I can survive where I was doing this part time. Mm -hmm. Because they got to the point, actually, I was making more money doing this mm -hmm. than my other job. And I wasn't putting the time in. I was making calls on my lunch breaks. Right. On yeah. the road. I said, well, let's do this, you know, full time, see what happens. And I just made little tweaks along the way where every year got better and better and better. In fact, the last four or five years, this thing's just exploded. Oh my god! To the point I'm probably going to have to hire somebody. Wow. Because I can't handle the workload. So you're doing it. Do you have Do you have anyone helping you right now? No, it's me. Um, it's, so it's been you this whole time? 
it's never well i don't know our friend when oh, yeah. we started when in it was small right uh, but i mean when i started i had maybe 30 40 customers wow and now it's over three thousand. that's so crazy yeah but and you didn't did you set goals for yourself did you plan along the way or you were just like just hustling and just trying to get the next order i out? planned along the way um i kind of saw what it could do and I mean, it's pretty much done everything I planned. It's it's outgrown or it's exceeded what I planned, mm -hmm. but there was nothing where it surprised me or caught me off guard. I mean, the, my biggest problem right now is just handling the volume, right? And the fact that I'm dealing with people overseas and there's just a lot yeah. of extraneous factors which make it kind of crazy. Um, I have a lot of people. Well, I have competitors here that do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, what it helps me is I've been doing it so long that. A lot of these guys that are working for them are calling me, begging me for work. Oh because, my gosh. I mean, I've had the companies over there tell me, you know, what they're asking, who's Harold Montgomery? He's buying up everything over here. And I, a lot of these guys, they don't start ordering this stuff until February. I have these guys working almost year round. Well, right. Because it's just so much being bought. And another advantage I have is the uh, stoves I have in Mexico that are done over there. Uh, so how did you get that connection in Mexico? Well, I started actually selling these to Hispanic students. Mm -hmm. the, right? And what are these? They, they're called kente stoves. Kente is just a, a method of weaving. Okay. It's kind of like a different type of cooking. That's oh. all it is. Uh, these are all handmade in Africa. I did okay. some for Hispanic students, but I said in the back of my mind, it's kind of messed up. I need to <laughs> yeah. go directly to, to the have stores. Them. Right, right. So I went to Mexico. Well, I didn't go to Mexico. I actually went to the library and just found out where I could get a source to make them. And you just were researching, like in, I was researching in the then, encyclopedia. I feel like that's a word no one ever says anymore. And not even encyclopedia. Um, there's sources through the government where you can find companies, but you kind of have to that get, are doing work in other countries. Doing this. I sent out bids, and people called me up. Okay, what do you want to get what? done? We'll send you a sample. And I said, fine, let's try this, and that yeah. was the result of that. Um, so a lot of schools that buy from me now come to me because I got both of them. Right. It's like, why? Does anyone else have the Mexican one? They do. Um, they're a lot more expensive than what I can do. Because and you got the connection early? I have a connection, but also uh, it takes a while to make those. Yeah. done by hand. Like it's an actual like mini serape. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. What they do is they take a giant, they make a giant blanket mm -hmm. and then they cut them. They cut them in the yeah. strips. But it takes them a long time to make these. So you can't, this isn't something you walk in January and say, do this. Oh my gosh. In fact, I'm, they're starting next week on 2019. For really? Me. Yeah. And you just, how do you project the numbers that you need? I look at my sales for the previous year and then I kind of go through the big accounts. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what's the odds of me getting these people again? What's the odds of people seeing this and buying more of it? And I just kind of, a lot of it's a guesstimate, a lot of it I take chances on. Right. Well, if I don't sell this, if I sell this number, I can deal with having the to loss. toss this out. Yeah, because at the end of the year, class of 2018, it's, it's no done. good. January right. 1st is no good. Yeah, you can't use that next year. So like, I did that last year. Um, in fact, she got to the person that works for me, she makes the Mexican stuff. She got scared that she wasn't gonna be able to finish. And what she, type of volume is she putting up? Like how many? She told me she can make a thousand a month. A thousand? Wait, there's one person or she's like managing? Oh, uh, she's managed the, uh, there's a plant down there. Okay. She manages everybody. Um, she started last July and I got them in in February when my, I was starting to sell. I called her two weeks later and I said, I don't think we made enough. Oh and my I God. I used to, she makes her stuff one time, once a year for me. Mm-hmm. She's never done more than two times. Now she's doing it. She's going to do it three times. I said, I, I'm going to sell out of these. Wow. And what I ended up selling out of, I did. But luckily she got it done where in time where I had enough. And I just told her, you know what? We just need to just start doing this monthly. Yeah. And we don't have to worry about this happening again. Because uh, we had some shipping issues. Not as bad as the, the ones in Ghana. Right. Uh, Ghana... I start them in July. There are two or three guys. I send them the designs and they just go. That one is a little bit more tricky because it's done by hand mm -hmm. and you kind of have to really examine what they're doing. 
Wow. So that's kind of stressful because I get this huge. So they there. hand stitch all of these. Oh, they start with rolls of thread. They really? sit down and the guy makes the entire stall. That's amazing. And like, How long does that take them to make one? It takes about four hours to do one of them. Wow. And is it now, so in Ghana, is it like primarily men or is it women too? I've heard there's some women. Um, I went there actually shortly before my son was born. Most of the weavers I saw, in fact, all I saw were men doing them. And they were pretty young. They were probably in their early to mid twenties. What? Yeah. Because they start these kids early. I saw 12, 13 year olds with an ax carving out statues and they're just, they're doing them off of memory. This is crazy. Yeah, he's just sitting there and he's just going like this and you look up and you can see a bird being formed. Wow. I said, do this. And he's like forming some other animal. He's just done it. And so, the guy's just, it's amazing what they can do. Is this like generations of yeah. families or people? They make the like, kids, because when they weave, sometimes they'll, they'll bring the kids out. They make them yeah. sit there and, and watch, watch the guy. And it's amazing how they make this, because when they do it, they do it backwards. That they make everything in oh, reverse. Oh, it's upside down? So he has to. Oh, it's the reverse. Yeah, okay, yeah. So he has to do all the letters in reverse. Oh, that's which crazy. Which sometimes is kind of crazy because sometimes <laughs> you get some here and the letters are <laughs> the reversed. <butt. laughs> yeah. Wow. So are you, have you been working with the same people in Ghana and Mexico uh, this whole time or has that changed? That's too? changed. Um, the person I started with in Ghana is kind of funny. I got their contact through a person in Detroit. This goes back to, uh, my mother was a school teacher in Detroit. Mm -hmm. She actually ran into a woman that ran an academy. They used to take students from Detroit over to Africa once a year. Wow. And she told the woman, you know, I think you need to talk to my son. Yeah. This is about 20 some years ago. I went over her house and, to talk to her. Um, she ended up passing me on to some friends of her who owned the store where they imported products from Ghana and they started buying the stuff for me because by then the one supplier I was working with was giving me a lot of problems okay and they said well this guy would deal with he's pretty honest uh, I was buying so much stuff from them the guy just said you know why don't you just give you the guy's name you deal with him because I was actually having to drive from Michigan from here to Michigan wow almost every other weekend to go pick my stuff up that's crazy but I, I mean what I was buying was huge he says you know here just call this guy and buy him Wow. So I started buying from this other guy in Ghana. In fact, it was funny. I started working with him in 90, 94. I didn't meet the guy until like four or five years later. <laughs> really? We never saw each other. Did you speak on the years. phone or anything? Uh, a couple of times we speak on the phone. Maybe back then, that's before the internet got really good. Yeah. It was just faxes. <laughs> and he just already knew what I wanted. the order yeah, over. Fax, and... you know, I'd sketch something here, send this. I need 200 days, 300 days, blah, 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 blah. So you're designing these? yourself um, a lot of yeah but the designs aren't that difficult um these are a lot of these are standard african symbols okay um, these are pretty standard what i do is take pictures like this yeah and i'll send it to them i've got everything coded wow and then i'll tell them you know i need 300 of these to put this on there right right and i'm drawing up a diagram that i give to them and they just go ahead and make it from there wow and i mean it's good great thing with the internet now is He'll sit there and take a picture. Okay, mm -hmm. how's this? Okay, fine. Go ahead and start making them. Well, how's this? Uh, shrink that. You know, can you do that? Okay. Blah, 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 blah. So you have the final approval of yeah, the design? Back then, it was kind of, I hoped he did this right. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a lot of times where it wasn't right. And then what do you do? You got to start on. Oh, my God. Or you God. pray to God. Well, after getting yelled at a few times, he kind of figures it out. Yeah, right. But, I mean, how do you manage that, like, from so far away? Especially before the internet. I mean, faxing, I guess. Is it worked. Um, fast, but. But after a while, he kind of knew what I wanted. Okay. And there's like little nuances. He would look at it and go, no, he's not going to like that. You got to do it this way. Yeah. Which some guys over there, is, they'll say anything. I've seen, I've had to deal with garbage. Because a lot of people aren't savvy enough to yeah. know, well, yeah, that's kind of average over there. This right. is what it really looks like. And now, because I actually started dealing with another guy about three or four years ago, and he was kind of getting upset because I was kind of picky. And I said, 
you'll see. If you do yeah. it right, you're going to get more people buying this. Exactly. And then it's he quality. started saying he was ordering more and more. And he kind of said, you know, I kind of understand now. And I tell these guys, you know, he's not going to like it like that. It has to be done this way. I mean, someone has to hold the standard. Right, exactly. So do you find... Do your suppliers supply to other, like your competitors? Or oh, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. And then that's, I mean, it's kind of tricky um, because we've talked about that. In fact, I talked about it with one guy this week. I was having all these shipping problems. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, well, you know, I had a customer had the same problem you had. Uh, it just took him a little bit longer, but it, I don't think he understood how to do to navigate the process like you do. Uh, but I also know they're not going to pass off the stuff I do. Yeah. Because I've, I've told them, I know I'm your biggest customer. Right. And I know, I know, although I'm not over there, I have years over there. So yeah. I know what's going on. I see stuff. I know what's, you know, what's going on. So are you like the OG stole guy? Not like... the, I'm not the first one to do it, but I think I'm the first one that kind of totally organized yeah. it. Yeah. It sounds like it. But yeah. I mean, it took to almost 30 years to get to that point. Do your competitors ever approach you for advice? No, I've had some approach me for orders. Um, oh, so you'll order for them? No. Oh, okay. I've had some take my material and copy it. That's my biggest issue. But I don't really, I don't even worry about that anymore. Because, so, because you're selling so much? I'm selling so much, but I also know the little problems that come as a result of that. Yeah. I have some people here that a lot of people just buy based on price. Right. And I've told people, well, yeah, you can pay this little price, but are they going to get you your stuff on time? Right. Because I have people call me up and they go, well, I don't know if you can do a blah, blah, blah. I said, I can get on the phone and talk to this guy in five minutes and get you an answer. Yeah. So what's your competitive angle then? So it's not price, and that's good because price is always a race to the bottom. Uh, one is quality. Okay. Two is timeliness. Because mm -hmm. I said, you know, you got a graduation coming up May 2nd. I'm not going to take your order if I can't get it to you. And I've been doing this 27 years. Wow. I know what all the problems are yeah. in getting this. I have a lot of people that call me up and say, you know, someone promised they were going to get these. They can't get them done. And I have guys that I can call there and say, well, they told you it'll take, take four weeks. I know a guy who can do it in a week and a half. Really? Yeah. I've, I've had like ridiculous orders that would take three weeks. And I've called the guy and said, you know what? Can you do us in four days? Wow. And he'll go, yeah. I said, are you sure? He says, yeah, I'll call it. I'll organize these people. So you've established trust with these people over right. 30 years. Right. I mean, wow. And I mean, they know as long as I do what I'm supposed to do, he's fine. And okay. So I guess I never thought about the fact that like you or someone on the other end was designing these. I just thought it was all uniform. So each, like your competitor will have a different design. I, a lot really? of the designs are the same. It depends on who you go to. And actually, let's call this person Joe. Joe, they made this. Yeah. They may go to Joe and, to give them this picture and say, make this. And it'll be the same. So there's no, like, these are not, like, copyrighted or trademarked. Or, no. There's nothing you can do these, about Yeah, that? these are standard, like, African symbols. Right. And you can't copyright that. And so it's just, wow. That's crazy. But... There's, like I said, there's a lot of things you got to consider when ordering these. Some of these things, like these designs take longer than others. Right. These take a lot, a lot longer because it's a lot more intricate. Mm -hmm. but so someone says, well, I need these in two weeks. The guy's like, there's no way. That's crazy. And people don't know that. So that, I mean, it's just time in the business, right? Mm hmm so do you see that there, I mean, what's this market like? Are there competitors coming on the scene? Because <sighs> there's people coming on, but... There's a lot of capital you have to put into this. Yeah. If you want to stay long. Okay. And somebody's coming out like, I mean, unless you have a bunch of money, I don't think you can do it. Uh, but you also have to have, have Because of the overhead costs to like start with these suppliers? You have to start with the suppliers and you have to evaluate so the suppliers. That's, that part is very, uh, very tricky. Expensive. Uh, it's expensive. And I've, I've run across some people that don't do good work. Yeah. And quite frankly, some people that just aren't honest. Mm -hmm. um, and these guys, a lot of these guys, they won't share the designs or they won't make the designs for other people. I had, and this, this happened last month, uh, I had a real ridiculous design 
this school wanted in Missouri. Oh, and so sometimes they can like put in requests. Oh, they put in requests. They have this program that's happening in this month. She gave me this ridiculous design. I gave it to the guy and he said, I can do it, but I got to charge you a lot more for mm. this. And I said, fine, just make one. I'll send her a quote and show her, show her the image. They sent me a contract and everything. Uh, I sent her the image. I said, let me know what you think about it. I said, okay, I'll get back to you tomorrow. All three days went by, never heard back from her. I called her on Friday. I knew it, I knew it wasn't going through. And in fact, I told the guy, Yeah. I said, this isn't going to work. I said, honestly, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Uh, she said they decided they weren't going to go with me. Which I knew was, yeah, but you sent me the contract. I didn't sign her anything. You sent me, it was a bid. It was a bid. It okay. wasn't a contract. And I told the guy, I said, somebody's going to make this for them. So she took the design and got a cheaper well, he's, price? She, he doesn't know, but he said, that's fine. I'll be looking out for it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he says, I, yeah. I mean, I, he says, I know everybody, almost everybody here that makes this. So if I see this, I don't know. He says, that design is difficult. There's only... A oh few, my god there's only a few people that can do that and by the way they won't finish in time so, so that's that yeah, and i said she's gonna come back yeah and her students aren't gonna have what they want to walk no with. I, like, I get that all the time i've had people call me you know someone told me they were gonna do this and we put her thing out we need like 300 of these oh my can you can you do this I said, yeah i can do it well how fast can you get them to you i said how fast do you need them i need them two days I said, I can get to you tomorrow. He says, do you yeah. have them? I said, I'm sitting here looking at them. Wow. I have a shelf full of them. I'm, I'm looking at them. Yeah. So what do you want to do? And so they take it? They take it. Because they're not going to find it anywhere else. So what do you do with all the left? Do you have leftovers? What do you do with them? I have a lot. I don't have that many leftovers like I used to. Um, because you're better at projecting now? I'm better at projecting. And I don't sell a lot of stuff where after December I can't use it. Oh, okay. Um, if I do have something left over, I'll just use it as a sample. I'll oh, okay. try and sell to a school that I've yeah. had trouble getting into and do it that way. But what it helps are referrals. I get a lot of referrals now. Because so you I, put out a quality product. Yeah, and a lot of, well, these administrators, they go, they right. go from school to school. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm at so-and-so right now and, you know, so-and-so is going to call you. They're going to order this. Higher ed is such a tight knit community. I feel like mm -hmm. I talked with someone today who does marketing for higher ed and she was saying the same thing. It's just, like once you get in with one and then they're all, or right. even within their programs, like if you have a master's program at this school mm -hmm. and then you're working with them, they're going to refer you to the same program at that school. Exactly. So is word of mouth your biggest, what, like how are you so su successful after all this time besides timeliness? Word of mouth, I got a lot of referrals from people that have gone from school to school to school. Um, I put labels on these, so a lot of times people, are, you know, I saw one of your scars, oh, really? I put a label and I decided to call you guys. I've seen your thing on the internet. Um, my daughter did this. And I've had people that, the students have bought it and then they end up going to work for somebody. Mm. Somebody at the company calls me. What does your label say on the inside? It just has my address on it. Really? Address and a telephone number. Does everybody put a label on it? Oh yeah. Okay, so that's like standard practice. But I've also started using um, social media. Which like helps. what social um, media? Facebook and Instagram. Oh really? Yeah. Just organically? Or are you paying? Well, I started using Facebook ads. Oh okay. Um, yeah. I kind of played around with it, which kind of shocked have me to. was, man, it's starting to work. Mm -hmm. So I was paying like twenty bucks. Mm -hmm. And you're getting like these big orders. It's like this stuff really works. I mean, to the point, I actually need to take a class. Were you like segmenting your audience? Yeah, I just broke it up. Okay, these are my demographics. I know already what mm -hmm. I'm going to pick and choose. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And I mean, you can put an ad in for like five bucks. Oh, yeah. You just test it. Right. And now they make it easy to test. You can run A-B testing. Right. So, so you just throw like 20 bucks at it and see which one performs better. Mm -hmm. And I mean, to me... The beast when i first started doing this i was just when i first started this is how crude it was i was going to the library downtown chicago they used to have telephone books mm -hmm. across the country i was pulling out telephone books and just and cold calling i wasn't cold calling. i was just pulling out the addresses for these schools oh my god and the major schools i mean i play sports just pull the conferences i'll pull the conference schedule all, all the uh, conferences 
Okay, let's call this one. Really? Let's go through this one. And I kind of knew what the population was. Mm -hmm. that's, I mean, every business I've had, I've basically dealt with schools. Mm. So I kind of know. Yeah, I think that's... Well, it's an industry, like we were saying, that doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. And with anything, if you like dedicate time to getting to understand it, right. to getting to know it, then now you see. So is this where you... When you were in college as an engineering student, did you foresee yourself being an entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, so why did you do engineering? You know, I was good at math and science. I always wanted to I stay be an engineer. I just wanted to go through the process, which I'm glad I did because engineering school was, was very stressful. Yeah. Which helps me now uh, with this business. Okay. But it also teaches you to kind of think. Because I get in these jams now with this business where it's just like engineering school. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are you trying to do? Right. Okay, this is the problem. Okay, what's the source of the problem? Okay, let's pull this piece out. Let's put this piece together. Boom, 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 boom. Just calm down. Think about it. It may work. It may not work. Right. So it's problem solving. Problem solving. Exactly. Which is the root of a lot of things because you can get overwhelmed in the process especially right. as a new business owner and entrepreneur mm -hmm. especially when you're by yourself yeah because i mean i was still had my wife laughing <laughs> my typical day is when it's really really busy i'm trying to send out orders i have people calling me about questions and then my cell phone sitting here and these guys in Africa are sending me questions. Texting about you? The design. Well, they're sending me these photos of these designs. Oh my gosh. So I'm like switching from this to this to that. Uh huh. And then at nighttime, I got to send them all the orders. Wow. And then I have to track, okay, these are all my due dates. Okay, I haven't heard about this order. Is everything okay with this? And it's, it's almost a 24 hour a day job because they're the six hours difference. ahead. Mm -hmm. So they get up around one o'clock in the morning. And they'll start sending you these images. Oh my God. And they're like, I need an answer. And you got to an answer. It's like four o'clock in the morning because the guys are sitting out there at the looms. Waiting. Yeah, we need to do this so we can get you your stuff on time. So you're sitting there like halfway groggy. Okay, <laughs> what's this thing look like? You got a folder you kind of tossing through. And then man, you're sitting there looking, okay, this package is supposed to come in today. And it's stuck in customs. You go, God, I got to deal with this. I had a lot of it the last two months. I had packages that were stuck mm. where I was thinking, okay, how am I going to do this? I had a massive problem where FedEx lost a couple more orders. They were like 300 pieces. Oh my God. And I was on the phone with from Africa. They were from, from Africa. Uh, they said, we think they lost your package. And I was looking at my due dates. I said, okay, I got a month to do this. Okay. This guy's event is on song. So that I mean, the customers will give you a due date, but you kind of go in and look and see when the event yeah. is. You kind of think in your mind, okay, they may give me a couple more days. But they, yeah, they should build in a grace period. Exactly. So I had one guy, I was just telling him, okay, how fast can you do 200 of these? Because I got 100 here. I think I can Make it work. look through that one. They found the package and it actually worked out. But it's just, it's a nightmare because it's like that for six weeks. And you just, every day is just like. How do you stay organized? What, like, what do you use? Actually, what tools do you use in order to track your deadlines? And um, make sure well, I have all my orders in a spreadsheet. They get spreadsheets. It has what I ordered. Like an Excel due. spreadsheet? It's an Excel spreadsheet. What I ordered, the day is due. Uh, when they send it to me, I color it out so they know they don't have to worry okay. about it. Um, as far as what orders have to go out, I separate each person's, each manufacturer's orders into a different folder. And I kind of know, okay, this guy's always on time, so I don't right. have to worry about him. Okay. This guy will kind of forget, so you kind of got to prod him. And you kind of, okay, I know it's, it's April, and this guy's going to start <laughs> falling behind. And they won't tell you. A lot of guys won't tell you right. I'm having problems getting it done. Because yeah. they don't want you to take it and go to somebody else. Exactly. Until, I, I call it true up. I call it May 1st <laughs> true up date. It's like, okay, what's going on with all these? Like, where are we actually and at? And there are things they won't comment on where you go, okay, I know that's a problem. Oh. And I kind of push that to the side. Then on the weekend, I go, okay, so what, when is this coming? Well, Do they guys, tell you? Yeah, they'll tell me. I'll finally tell them. I'll tell them, you know what? The date I got you, I can't change it. So if there's a problem, let me know. Oh, yeah, there's a problem. 
This because there's another big problem with these. Uh, they weave these outside. Outside. Outdoors because Why? they need so much. They need so much space. They have to set the loom up, and the loom may be you have four or five spools with, over there with it by the door. Wow. You can't do that in the house. And then you've got 10, 15 guys out there working because they have to put all of them together to make sure that they're doing the same design. They're not screwing up the specification. Well, it starts raining in April. So it's rainy season. They, so that's it? They're out of commission because it's raining? They, they can't. They can't work. I mean, anymore. but like after 30 years, they didn't like... Oh, we, we had to talk about that. <laughs> fact, the first time that happened, I said, you can't buy like a pavilion or something yeah. to stick in there. As one guy was dealing with, said, well, I've been working on blah, blah, blah. I had another guy that finally did it last year. I said, I mean, come see on. How the problem, see how the problem goes away? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just crazy. You know, he'd call you up. Well, they couldn't work today. Well, I hope we can get this done because it rained this morning. Oh, my. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, you should go through that. Okay, are you ready? Are you going to send me that stuff today? Well, they did have them because it rained. And you're like, I don't have to, I don't have me one time. Right. Okay. It rained. And I, I will go through, I've went through this for like 20 years. Wow. I couldn't finish. I mean, you're calling people. Okay. Are you sure it's due on the 30th? Well, you know, if you get to me on the third, I'm okay. This is crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I mean like that, seem, there's a preventable solution, right? You put up a, put a up ceiling or a, something. Of and some when I went sort. over there, I said, I actually went to a place, it was almost like a picnic area. Yeah. And they had the thing up there. I said, why can't you just do this? A tarp, even. Right. I mean. And this guy actually did that. He put a tarp in there because he finally said, you know, you're buying so much stuff, I can't. Well, right. How can they miss a, that day of work? Right. I guess. Right. Because it rained. And I've told him, you know, if you can't do this, I'm going to find somebody else that can. Yeah. Or I'm just not going to sell them. I can't promise people something where we're all sitting there sweating. Right. Hoping, hoping it gets here. It seems like you're very process oriented. Have you ever, have you always been that way? No, I always, my wife thinks I'm disorganized. <laughs> I don't like having problems. I don't like surprises mm. at all. I mean, I know things are going to come up, but I don't like things that are easily preventable. Right. You know, let's get done. What do you need to do? What do you need to get your stuff done? Let's take care of that. I know something's going to come up yeah. and we can deal with that. Right. But I can't deal with, with being Preventable. unorganized. And it's one thing I do with these guys at the end of every season. I'll ask them, you know what, what could we have done better? Yeah. So this wouldn't have happened. Um, we did this last year. This is years ago when the guy said, you know, instead of having everything made in January or February, why don't you get everything made in the summer? And that way, all we're doing, working on is your custom stuff. And if it does rain, we're not working on a lot of stuff where, yeah, a guy might yeah. be out for a couple of days, but it's not, you know, it's 200 pieces versus 2,000. Right. So I started making all my stuff in the summertime. Um, Do you find that they're honest with you after this time to give you feedback? Because I feel like you can ask that question, and if you're not getting an honest response, then it's useless. Yeah, they're honest because they're getting paid, they're getting paid well, and they're getting paid on time. And... It's easy for them. I said, all you got to do is this. I'm giving you exactly what I want. Yeah. You can kind of look at the orders, keep a record of them. And you know now, okay, in February, mm -hmm. this one's coming. And I'll tell them, okay, this design that gave us trouble last year is coming in two weeks. So that guy, the only they person know. that can do it, get him ready. Get the stuff ready. If you don't have this, then let me know. I can work around it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I tell them that all the time. I don't like surprises. <laughs> and when I get surprised, I stop. Okay. Um, if something I told him this week, you know, let's stop doing these prayer shipments. And he says, what's a prayer shipment? I said, when you ship me something on Monday and you pray to God, it gets home. Yeah. It's <laughs> something like, yeah, that. you need to send it on Friday so I can get it. When we were having all these problems with Federal Express, I told him two months ago, I told him a month and a half ago, there's something going on there. It's going to, it's going to be a problem. Uh, because I had, my stuff is coming through customs, but I have it set up where they're supposed to just scan everything mm -hmm. and it comes through because I'm in their system. Right. They weren't scanning them, so they were holding everything up. And I said, well, I've been looking at all the shipments you sent me and it seems like Mondays and Friday shipments are being stopped. Start sending them on Thursday. Weird. Start sending them on Thursday. Why is that? 
a system on Thursday. Well, I think because there were a lot of people shipping on those days. Mm. Friday, oh. last day of the week. Monday, the beginning of the week. And people at the shipping companies are probably so unorganized, they're backed up. Yeah. They're taking stuff off the plane. And another guy told me that they may not put your stuff on the plane that day. They won't tell you that. Because they're so backed up? They're so backed up. I said, send it on Thursday. Most people aren't in there on Thursday. They're yeah. coming in on Friday. And send it and try and get it here so it gets here on, on Saturday. If it gets here Saturday, I get the weekend to pack everything. Right. Because I don't, Mondays for me are insane because I have to go pick up these packages, mm -hmm. start packing them. Then you get all these people calling. Yeah, I have a question about this. I want to order yeah. that. Can we get this by Friday if we're doing this? And I'm sitting there looking at about a thousand pieces I'm trying to get out the door. Wow. Which is crazy. But what were you like growing up? I mean, you this. I don't think that this level of processing is something you teach yourself just because you went to school for engineering. Um, it seems more inherent than that. Well, my mother's a school teacher. Right. So, <clears throat> she kind of... Do you have missed. siblings? Yeah, I've got two brothers, two sisters. Are you, where do you I'm call? the second youngest. Okay. Um, I actually have a twin brother. Oh, really? Yeah, he's like totally different from me. <laughs> like opposite? Totally opposite. Uh, he works for the government. He's actually been working for the government almost 30 years. Wow. Uh, but, I mean, my mother, one thing they, they taught me... I remember this from the time I was a little kid. They always got two papers each day that they read. My mother read the paper in the morning before mm -hmm. she went to work. She read it at night. She did a crossword puzzle. <laughs> and she got Time Magazine. And I used to sit there and read the paper. Oh, I was reading the sports section, but I kind of read current events. So I kind of always knew what was going yeah. on. And my father was, both my parents were really strict on education. You, know, you got to go to college. You got to decide what you want to do um i mean they didn't push where you know you're gonna you're gonna be an engineer or a doctor that's, or something yeah it's yeah. kind of like we want you to be exposed to a whole lot of different areas just so you kind of know okay this is what's out here this is what i can what i can do um i, I guess i was worried that i was always interested in math and science i knew i was going to go to engineering mm -hmm. school but I knew from the time before I graduated, actually before I went to high school, I wasn't going to work for anybody. You just knew? Like well, I, you know, I started, I had, I was, I was, I had a paper route. Uh -huh. So, you know, I was, what, 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I was making my own money. Um, I was selling greeting cards to people when I was yeah. like 7 years old. <laughs> you know, cutting out stuff out of magazines and doing that. And Making said, them and selling them? No, I was just buying them and reselling them. Oh my God, them. that's funny. And I said, it's funny, you know, there's a lot, there's an easy way to do this. Yeah. Uh, when I was like, the first time I ever remember selling something on my own was, I actually had a lemonade stand. Mm -hmm. And so I would take this TV tray out to the front and my mom would like take me to buy the poster and I would make the poster for lemonade and have it, the pitcher and the glasses. And then I remember the first time I did that, I mean, I was selling it for a quarter a glass. My, like, I packed it up at the end of the day and I walked back to the house mm -hmm. and my mom was like, okay, it cost, you know, five dollars right. to buy all your supplies today. So make sure you take that five. She made me pay her the overhead cost and right. I was eight and I was, I was not happy about that, but I, I didn't realize what a big lesson that would be for later in exactly. life. And exactly. then I started selling I used to make those friendship bracelets, but I was very organized. So I had mm -hmm. like all my colors organized, like in the rainbow shades. And then I had samples and I had a price list. And mm -hmm. I was probably at that point, it was like in second or third grade. And then just, so I feel like once you get that mentality, you either have it or you don't. And it's kind of hard. You have to, I don't know, you learn how to hustle at a young age, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, there were things I wanted to do or things I wanted to get where I didn't want to Ask my parents. Right. Well, you kind of know. I mean, I had five. There were five. Yeah. Ones, and it's like, you're not getting all this. Exactly. So I said, you know, I want to get a bicycle. I got a paper out. There was a contest. I want a bicycle. Okay. You know, I'm getting this bicycle. Right. I got my bicycle. Um, I want to go get my ice cream and my hot dog. Yeah. Okay. I'm not buying ice cream and hot Okay. I got my job. I'm buying my ice cream and hot right. dog. I mean, when I was in high school, in elementary school, I was a safety boy. 
So mm -hmm. we had to, you know, watch kids going to school, whatever. I used to go to, to, to the store before I went to school. I'd buy a bunch of candy bars, bring them to school and sell them. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in high school, I did the same thing. I went to a grocery store and I'd buy them and sell them between classes. My brother would sell sticks of gum for yeah. like a dollar. Yeah. You could buy the whole pack and he was selling them in class mm -hmm. for a dollar. But what about, so what, what do your siblings do? Are you the only entrepreneur? Yeah, I'm the only one. Um, I mean, I'm totally different from what they do. Um, but, I mean, that's just, we all have different personalities. Yeah. But it's interesting what, like, what kind of home environment breeds that? Or maybe it's not as connected. <sighs> no. I mean, a lot of that was home. Um, a lot of the stuff I just kind of picked up. I mean, I remember talking with my uncles. I had an uncle in D.C. that was a dentist. And he was always firm on that. You know, you got to get your own business. Really? Because, uh, yeah, a company will give you this. They kind of hook you in. But you're only going to make but so much. Mm-hmm. And what you were saying earlier is you end up being a pawn if you you're work a pawn, for a corporation. You're a pawn, a corporation. You're easily replaced. You're, you can be replaced. And I never thought, you know, working for a company, I'm not going to do everything I want to do or everything every day. Right. I mean, from the time I was my first job until I, I left my last job, I'd always come in going, hey, I can't wait to get out of five so I can do what I need to do. Yeah. I mean, it's like... This is, this is kind of boring. It's kind of a waste of my time. Um, I'm not really being challenged by it. I don't say challenged. This isn't, isn't what I want not to do. Not the challenge you want. Right. I mean, I just know I'm not going to do this forever. Wow. So are you happy with where, how it's grown? Yeah. I mean, I'm ec ecstatic. I mean, it's, I never thought it would do what it's doing now. What's the next step? I guess maybe get someone to, to work for me. I mean, one mm -hmm. thing I like about this is, and I kind of stress it with these guys overseas, mm -hmm. um, they kind of have a tendency, well, let's get close to finishing it. And I say, well, you got to realize, I've sent them pictures of people that graduated. You know, this is why this stuff has to be on right. time. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is like the biggest days in a lot of these people's lives. And you don't want to screw it up. You don't want to yeah. be, you know, this is the guy that didn't do this. Right. I didn't do that. Well, and for the people wearing what you're making, I mean, this is a big deal for their families. Like exactly. The Mexican one of your first generation, that is a big deal. Exactly. In your family. Right. To be able to wear that with honor and then, like, have your parents there and take the photos. Because the um, commencement speaker at Loyola Chicago was a first generation graduate. Mm -hmm. And so to hear her whole story, I mean, we were all crying, but, like, my parents immigrated here. My dad and my stepmom from Mexico. So, like, to see them in tears and then know that my sister was in the audience wearing one of these stoles. It was just such right. an emotional like day, I right. guess, or situation. And so exactly. that's, so do they understand that? Does, can you hammer that home or not really? They get it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But Have I they guess... ever been to a graduation ceremony here? Me? No, okay. not you. Them. I don't know. Um, a couple of guys I work with, they, they can't get overseas. You need a visa and all that to get over here. But yeah, they've been over here and they've seen, yeah, this is like really, really important. Yeah. Because I've, I've sent them pictures and said, look, now imagine if they didn't get these. Right. Because I've had orders where I didn't think they were going to get there and I've sent them pictures. I said, now imagine this if oh they didn't God. get these. Yeah. And they kind of go, okay, I get your point. What's the biggest mistake that's happened so far or the biggest lesson you've learned? I tell, like I tell my son, check your work. Mm. I had orders where I didn't check the sketch and I've trans transposed letters. Oh, wow. But this is before the internet where I can check it. Yeah. I mean, I opened up a box. It was actually for a school in Chicago. There were 300 of them. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I thought the guy had messed up. And then I went back and looked at my sketch and I just oh. put my head in my hands. Um, I ended up calling someone else that actually did it. We got it in time. But barely. But you had to eat the cost of the first order? Oh, I had to eat it. Mm-hmm. Um, think of one else. I had one or a woman in Mexico. Her interpretation of what color was different. I told her <laughs> Wait, I what needed, does that mean? <laughs> I need a stove that's gold. And she sent me one that was brown. What? 
that. And her goal was actually y'all. Wow. So that took me about four or five years. Really? To get rid of those. <laughs> but, you know, nothing that was just like, okay, this is a danger zone where I'm just really, really messed up. Because I kind of, I just work everything through my head. I'm not yeah. doing anything crazy. And I check, I'm constantly checking stuff. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I mean, everything's time sensitive. I just can't, at this point, I can't make a mistake. So do you have a process down where if you brought someone else in, they could fall in line? Obviously, they'd be new, so they'd have to learn it. But do you have a process? Because I still feel like as a new entrepreneur, like I'm still working on my own process. I'm trying to get a schedule and a routine somewhat. And some days you can't. Some days just kind of go off the cuff. I could probably do it. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty easy. The only thing that will probably be hard is actually inspect doing inspections okay. on these because they're little nuances. Your the hard, quality of the standard, detect. yeah. Because I told my wife I can pick up a bundle, right, and know how many are in there. Yeah. Or I can pick up a bundle and know, okay, this, these are too thin. These long, the wow. wrong weight. Um, well, a lot of these I can just open up one and go, okay, everything, this is gonna be fine. You just I can I can look at one and go, oh my god, this package, just, there's some problems in here. Oh my goodness. Sometimes they make them and the threads are they're not tight, and then you can see at the bottom they're so sagging come apart. They're coming apart. It's like I can't believe you, you did this. And what is that? So you are you are every aspect in your business, like your quality control, your process, your everything, operations, mm -hmm. communications, HR. Yeah. So what role do you wanna fill if you bring someone on? Uh, I'd like to have someone a that can well, one answer the phones. That's the biggest. Okay. That takes a lot of time. Because you have to sit down and talk with people that don't understand. More I like understand. a sales yeah, call? a sales call. Okay. okay, this is what you want. This is what we need in order to do the order. Um, and kind of walk them through that. Wow. If, I mean, if you're spending 20 minutes on the phone with somebody, that's like four or five words you could have gotten out the door. Oh, okay, got it. Um, How does that affect your relationships in your life? If you're tied to your phone all the time or your emails? <sighs> It has been bad. Well, my son, when he was in school, he was in school all day. Right. So by the time he came home at five o'clock, I'm done. Okay. And I can pretty much do what I need to do through lunch time, through dinner time. Um, and I have summers off. So I kind of make oh, up for right. that. Oh, right. Yeah. So it's not year round. This was year round. There's no way. I didn't, okay. I would have fired somebody a long time. Yeah. Um, so you do get summers off. So there's like a slow season for you. Yeah. Because uh, I'll be pretty much done third week in June. Okay, got it. Um, and mean, when does your season start? It starts up... In July? Well, I start... They're going to start making stuff again. Um, I'm actually going to start on my website. I've had a major website problem this year for the last two years. Mm. I'm getting that totally redone. Oh, that's good. Um, then I have to start working on my designs. I have to update my mailing list. My mailing list is pretty old. Mm -hmm. um, that constantly changes. Which is so interesting because it seems like a lot of people are so focused on like your email list and all your social media, but you are, I really, and I believe that like if your product is good and the word of mouth is there, which takes time, I mean, you don't get word of mouth right. in a year or even two years, you know, it takes more time than that to build right. that audience. Then the rest of the stuff will follow and it's just kind of building brand awareness. Right, and with something like this, I, I'm a lot more confident when somebody has this in their hand versus yeah. hoping they go to a site somewhere. Right. Because yeah. most people that get this, they'll, oh. Yeah. Ch -ch -ch click. Boom. And then they're, yeah. I got it. Exactly. Or just like the stool themselves with the label inside. I exactly. Mean, I really think that's probably. And a lot of schools now, they kind of go, oh, yeah, I've seen these. Oh, this is the guy that did such and such department's yeah. graduation. Wow. Because I have a lot of schools where four or five departments buy from me at a time. Wow, really? Yeah. Well, and I also didn't think about the fact that different departments are buying from different people. So the whole university is not buying no, from the not. same... Each department, had, well, it depends on the school, but most departments have their own budgets. They're, they run their own programs. And their own graduations, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. When you go to graduation, you exactly. know that. Yeah. Wow. And I kind of know now, okay, which departments that kind of go through and there's a lot of schools I don't even market to because there's so many people there trying to sell them stuff. Really? I just kind of go, okay, let's go where they're not. 
Yeah, exactly. I'd rather take 20 small orders and try and fight somebody for a big order where they're going to beat you down on the price. Exactly. Anyway. Plus, it's a problem. It may be a problem getting all this stuff done. So, how do you figure out where people aren't? I just go through that list. Really? I go, these are the populations, these are the segments at this school. I'm off target market. Mm -hmm. And let's just go get them. And I just look at my demographics. So you, I mean, it sounds like obviously you really understand your target audience and your demographic. And you have from the beginning when you were using the phone books. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Actually, a friend of mine in business school, they had a project. Uh, one of my classmates was starting a toy company. And they did this demographic study for her toy company. Mm -hmm. She gave me that report. And that's how I started it. Uh, but I kind of knew, just being in college, okay, these are where my demographics yeah. are. Because most of my friends in college are from out of state. Okay. So you kind of learn. And I'm like, I traveled all the time when I was working. Right. Okay. When I was on the road all the time, I was going to colleges mm -hmm. after after work. You know, let's just see what's the demographic here. Really? Um, the communities. When I was in Atlanta, Atlanta's a college town. It's a huge college town. Uh, I was in Florida all the time. Colleges, tons of colleges down there. Wow. Um, California, same thing. Wow. That's because I feel like that's something that people are not taking the time to do anymore. They're just so focused on social media and their email list or whatever. But knowing your audience is probably the most important thing you can do. But in order to figure that out, you have to really understand what you're selling mm -hmm. or the service or product that you're offering. Well, what helped me too was before all this stuff came up. I had to get out there and use my hands. I had to go to the library and, and yes, dig through all this stuff. So exactly. kinda, I kind of know, okay, I'm such and such book had these. Democrat, okay, let's pull these out. Let's look at that. Yeah, I don't think there's a better way to figure it out than to actually get into the environment, mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing. Um, I feel like that's a good place to wrap it up. Okay. Do you have I anything else you want to say? That's it. Where can people buy your stoles? <laughs> That's true. Buy for your kids. <laughs> Where? And What's cousins. your website? Uh, it's MidwestGlobalGroup.com. Is it redone yet? You uh, It'll it? be redone hopefully by the middle of July. All right. Cool. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, me too.